Welcome to Her Remarkable History. Remember to support our channel. Please subscribe. The Lonely Life of Queen Victoria's Daughter, Princess Beatrice. Princess Beatrice was the youngest child of Queen Victoria and Prince Albert, and she was affectionately known well into her adult life as Baby. She was born in 1857, and she, after the death of her father, ultimately became her mother's companion, living at Osborne House, and this essentially crafted her strong associations with the Isle of Wight. And sadly for Beatrice, she was only allowed to marry her husband, Prince Henry of Battenberg, if the pair lived on the Isle of Wight and made their home with the Queen. Beatrice, as a child, grew up quiet and reserved, as all of her siblings were somewhat older, and Leopold, her brother, although similar in age, was quite sickly. This left Beatrice alone, in a sense. But because Beatrice was the baby in the family, her parents indulged her, and for this she became a little naughty. There is one instance where she shut her governess in the barracks of the children's miniature fort at Osborne House, and for her to be released, she demanded that she barked like a dog. From a young age, it was clear that Beatrice was being groomed for one thing, to be her mother's helper, her companion, and because of this, the prospects of marriage were somewhat unlikely. But when Beatrice was 27 years of age, she met and fell in love with Prince Henry of Battenberg. Now, initially, Victoria was very against the idea of her daughter marrying, and after Beatrice announced her intention to do so, Victoria didn't speak to her for months. However, she eventually allowed the marriage, on the condition that Prince Henry resigned his commission in the Prussian army, and that the couple made their home with her. So, plans were set, and on the 23rd of July 1885, Princess Beatrice and Prince Henry married at St Mildred's Church, Whippingham, near Osborne. They made Osborne their home, and in 1890, a private wing was created for them, and their four children were then born between 1886 and 1891. Henry, however, grew restless living at Osborne, and felt trapped, even after Victoria made him governor of the Isle of Wight. So on one occasion, he left, unbeknown to the Queen, to go to Costica. Victoria was furious, and she even sent a warship to bring him back. In late 1895, he persuaded Queen Victoria to let him travel to West Africa to fight in the Ashanti War, but he caught malaria whilst in Africa and died in January of 1896 on the return journey. Now, after Henry died, Beatrice was distraught. She was devastated. But she then succeeded her husband as governor of the Isle of Wight. And living in Osborne Cottage, she remained her mother's companion and unofficial secretary. After the death of Victoria in 1901, Beatrice dedicated the next 30 years of her life to editing her mother's journals. It wasn't until after the death of Queen Victoria that Beatrice moved to Carisbrook Castle, making it her summer residence. Traditionally, the castle was where the governor of the Isle of Wight would reside, and when it became vacant, Beatrice moved in. There were already links between Carisbrook and Beatrice. She opened a museum in 1898 in the gatehouse as a memorial to her husband, and after some alterations, Beatrice moved in. She updated the castle to include a bathroom, and she had the medieval hall range and the adjacent chamber block the constable's lodgings, adapted for her use. Many internal fittings, such as panelling and window seats, still survive from her time, and the L-shaped range in the southeast corner of the castle was adapted to provide accommodation for her staff, and a tunnel was even built between it and Beatrice's apartments to allow them easy access. The garden within the walls of the castle was converted from a pleasure and kitchen garden to one for Beatrice's personal use as a private privy garden. In recent years, the garden has been re-landscaped and the inspiration was taken from the Edwardian-style garden that Beatrice used. Now, there is also a chapel within the grounds of the castle and Beatrice, in 1919, decided to complete restoration works on the Chapel of St Nicholas and it was transformed into a memorial to the men of the island who died from the First World War. The names of the 2,000 island men 
killed in both the First and the Second World Wars, are inscribed on the stone's panels between the windows, whilst Princess Beatrice commissioned the altar painting in memory of her youngest son, Maurice, who was killed in Ypres in 1914. Now, Beatrice loved and breathed in Carisbrook Castle for 25 years, and her standard flew over the walls when she was in residence up until 1938. After this, she then remained in her home in Brantridge Park in Sussex until she died in 1944. After her death, she was initially buried within the royal vault of St George's Chapel at Windsor Castle, but within the year, she was then moved to Whippingham, buried in a double tomb next to her husband, Prince Henry of Battenberg. Thank you for watching and to support please subscribe to Her Remarkable History. Thank you.